What's up guys, do you have a seven foot boa constrictor you are trying to feed medicine to? Let's see if she wraps my left arm. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I want to mention when grabbing the snake out of the cage. Okay guys, so we're here in the snake room and I wanted to show you a little bit about pulling a large boa constrictor out. If you don't trust the boa constrictor for whatever reason, it might have a bad attitude at the moment. The best thing is to use something that makes your hand feel safe, protects you from getting bit possibly, and can touch the snake on the head. When you touch the snake on the head, usually it knows that it's not feeding time. Because especially with Dumeril's boas, they have a very high feeding response. You can walk into the room and they'll just start striking at the glass. It's happened multiple times for me. So every night for the past two weeks, I've been pulling this girl out, so I pretty much trust her, but I just wanna show you um, what I did when I first started. Well, first I would knock, let her know I'm there. Yeah, see, she already knows she's kind of pulling back. She's not being aggressive. Whenever they're curled up in that S formation, that's when you wanna watch out, because that's when they have the longest stretch, similar to a person throwing a punch. So if they're straight out, they don't really have any reach to strike, but if they're pulled back like this, they have reach to strike. So I'm just gonna touch her on the head. And what I would do is kind of hold this against her head while I touch the rest of her body and just sort of pull her out that way. Once she's in sort of flight mode, it's pretty much okay, at least in my experience, because she's just trying to get away. Now, while we're on the topic of infections, I can feel her belly is warm because she was on the warm side over here. Warmth helps fight off infection. So make sure you got that 90 to 95 temperatures and she's sitting right over it because uh, maybe she realizes it, it helps uh, her fight off the infection. We're gonna head over to the bathroom now. My wife is gonna help me administer the Enrofloaxin to this girl right here. For me, my boa was facing a possible upper respiratory infection. And so this was the medicine they prescribed. Enrofloaxin. This is about a week's supply. I saw an improvement and then I called them back for another week's supply because I still saw a little bit of symptoms. But you'll need your medicine. You'll probably need a credit card to get the snake's mouth open. And you will need what they give you with the medicine. You have your uh, syringe thing here. And the medicine says to be giving doses of 0.5 milligrams every 24 hours. And don't forget to shake it well. Shake, shake, shake it well. So right there, you can see we are at five milligrams. And so now I will get my wife's help to deliver the medicine. So first, I just want to thank Betty. I just want to thank her for letting me shoot this video that can hopefully help some of you guys that might be concerned about oral medication. So you can give shots to your snake or you can do oral into the mouth. Um, and so we chose oral and my wife's been helping me for the last two weeks here. So she's gonna uh, come on camera here and help in a second as well. Um, so what I've noticed is if they wrap around your arms like this a little bit, that can actually be helpful as long as you have a hand free to use the credit card to open their mouth. The reason it's helpful is because if her body is just lying on my lap while I you know, hold her and, and uh, pry her mouth open, um, her body can fall and jerk her head suddenly. And I'm holding her head, you know, not too tight, but I'm holding it firm. And if her body falls to the ground, it just kind of jerks everything and throws everything out of her portion. So if you can have her wrapped around your arm like that, it controls her body and kind of makes things easier. Now I'm in a really good position here, so I'm gonna do it. I just lightly grab behind her head and she's been really uh, well behaved for me here. And you don't really want to push. Their teeth fold backwards into their, their skull. So you just kind of lightly put it at the front. And then once you get it in, try to twist the card a little to get them to open their jaw. And then have somebody administer the medicine as far back towards the back of their throat as you can. And sometimes little by little, because if you shoot it all in there at once, some of the medicine might fall out of the mouth because 
their throat isn't like as open as ours. The muscles, you know, towards the back of their throat might be kind of closing around their throat because they realize something's going on. So to make sure the most medicine gets stuck in the mouth and goes down the throat, uh, make sure the syringe goes into like the corner of her mouth and that the person who has the syringe uh, puts it as close to the middle of her throat as they can. And don't put it into the windpipe, which is that thing in her mouth that looks like a tongue, but has a hole in it, like a cylinder sized hole. Don't put it in there. Just in the back of her throat. Make sure you don't put it in the windpipe. So sometimes the teeth are gonna be shut a little. Try to separate the teeth. And once you go in about a centimeter to three quarters of an inch, that's when you'll want to kind of pry sideways like that. And it gives the person administering the medicine the ability to get into the side of the mouth and into the back of the throat. If she squirms a little, it's all right. You're not gonna really choke them. I'm not really holding tight, just firm. Um, wait till you get a good position. See, she's gonna try to stiffen out her body like this. That's another reason why it's good if she's wrapped around your hand because it gives her less ability to try to get out of it. So she's never tried to bite me so far. Um, let's try to keep that record going strong here. Look at her. See? And even now, she's such a good girl. Like she's not even trying to bite me. Past two weeks, I've been doing this every night to her. Um, doesn't mean she won't try. I'm just saying she hasn't yet. And it kind of looks scary. It looks like she's going to bite, but she really just, look, she's just trying to escape. I say that while I'm pulling my face back, because you never know. <laughs> All right, so let's try this again. Yeah, see, she, she's kind of defending a little now. Like, she knows I'm trying to go around her neck, so she kind of knows how to move a little bit. So I try not to rush it as much as possible and just make sure the medicine gets in there good. This is actually the longest it's ever taken because... She has a good grip on my hand, and most of her body is free, which allows her to get in a position that is kind of tough for me to, uh, uh, to work with her without being super forceful. Because I'm, I'm not trying to be super forceful with her. So I'm actually going to break my rule, and I'm going to break her grip on my hand because that's going to allow me to get her body into a different position. That's going to be a little better for me to grab her neck. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. The more space she has to stretch her body, the harder it's going to be for you. Thank you, Betty. I'm trying to help you. Thank you for not biting me, though. All right, let's try this. This is decent until unless she tries to stretch out here. Right, her neck's staying curled, so I'm gonna try to. She's really, she really pulled strong that time. I didn't want to stress her out. So again, the goal for me at least is not to be forceful with her. So I'm firmly holding her behind the head, but barely even firmly. And that time she was really pulling through hard, and so that's why I wanted to pull away. So what I might need to do here is actually get her to wrap my arm. So this is actually a good video because this did not go so easy. And in the past, it's gone easier before. But when it doesn't go so easy, it allows me to show you in case you run into problems, same problems as me. So I'm trying to get her to wrap my arm. That gives her less wiggle room. It gives her less ability to stretch out. Let's see if she wraps my left arm because I need my card hand free. Okay, now her body's kind of wrapped around my leg a little. Let's see if we can do this. Sometimes she's going to stretch out and if you're sitting down that could be helpful because then the person like my wife here who's standing up can still administer the medicine. I try not to poke her gums too much. Here we go, hon. Watch out for her trachea and go all the way to the back. Little by little, it's just a little bit here for sure. Looking pretty good from this angle. That it all? Yep. Okay, let it go. Let her close her mouth. A little medicine's probably gonna come out. It's just like impossible to prevent. Um, because like I said, their muscles in their throat really kind of close their throat a little bit. Um, so unless you're like shoving that thing down their throat, which I don't know, that, that wasn't recommended to me. <laughs> I was only told just to put it you know, in their mouth. 
And for the most part, like I said, they're gonna, she's gonna get it. So you'll see they'll kind of play around with their jaws a little bit over the next few minutes. When you put them back in their cage, they might kind of rub up against the walls of the cage as if they're trying to like itch themselves, you know, trying to just kind of wipe off the medicine a little bit, whatever fell out of their mouth. Sometimes you will see a little medicine bubble out of their nose. Right now it's not, but mostly every night, every other night before, I've seen it. And sometimes a little bit of it bubbles out the side of their mouth. She's been really good for us. Thank you, Betty, for being a tool of education. It's kind of cool sometimes. You can actually hear their bones crack, like our bones. They're really strong, you know, they're just really well built. So after this, sometimes I, you know, she's, she's really nice. I like to just kind of pet her and let her know, you know, thank you. Um, just spend a little time with her, try to comfort her at least in my mind of like what comfort is, you know. Um, reptiles aren't used to that in the wild, there's nobody comforting them. But, you know, here they're in captivity and they have brains, they have knowledge and wits to a certain degree and, and I think they can adapt and they can learn, uh, they can have learned behaviors and they can learn who you are. I, I think it's even possible for reptiles to have emotional connections with people. Not every reptile and not every situation, but I definitely think it's possible and I, I think there's been a lot of evidence for that in the reptile world. Um, so I just like to spend a little time with her and then put her back in her cage and, and just kind of um, let her have her own time. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is uh, put her back. Sometimes a little bit of the medicine is falling out of their mouth you could wipe it up with a like a paper towel or some toilet paper or you could just put her back in her cage and you know the medicine will fall off naturally so okay all right she's been a really good girl for us she's wrapping my leg hardcore right now and she has this beautiful pink salmon undertone to her belly and scales over here right now all right so thank you very much Betty we're gonna get you back and thank you guys I will see you in the next video and uh, let me know if there's any topics you want me to talk about <laughs>